Alright, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be solving the last 10 questions of this AS Level Chemistry Pass paper. So let's not waste any more time and get into the questions. So, question 31. In an experiment, protons are deflected by an angle of a positive 15 degrees. In another experiment, under identical conditions, particle Y is deflected by an angle of negative 5 degrees. So you should think to yourself that obviously there should be more electrons than protons. And so options 1 and 2 are correct and b would be your answer but if we look at the diagram i'm going to explain it a little closer and so you have the radioactive substance inside a lead block and you have the electrically charged plates of course one is positive the other is negative now the radiation is composed of beta rays gamma rays and alpha rays the beta rays are uh, composed of electrons the alpha rays are composed of protons and so they're attracted to the oppositely charged plates of course negative with positive and the positive with negative the gamma rays are neutral so that is why they pass straight across the electrically charged plates now if the protons are um, deflected by 15 degrees that means if we keep adding electrons they're going to move closer to the beta rays area so if we had 15 electrons and as they said um for example 15 degrees as in 15 protons that's what i'm going to say right so then 15 electrons 15 protons that cancels out and it becomes neutral and that is where the gamma rays are and then if we keep adding more electrons it's going to be deflected to the negative side where the beta rays are and so that would mean that there should be more electrons than protons for this uh question to be true for the particle y and that is it so question 32 graphene graphite and the fullerene uh, C60 are all allotropes or allotropes of carbon. Which statement are correct for all three of these allotropes or allotropes of carbon? So, of course, all of them have delocalized electrons in their structure because carbon is only um, bonded to three other carbons when carbon can have a total of four bonds because one of the um, electrons in the p orbital is free. Now, all bonds are 120 degrees. That is not true because the C60 has pentagons in it and also hexagons. So not all of them are 120 degrees. And then, so if two is out, then three has to be out as well. It has a giant molecular crystalline lattice structure. No, the C60 it does not have a giant molecular structure. And so only option one is true for all of them because all of them have an electron in the P orbital giving rise to delocalized electrons. So A, sorry, so D is your answer. So now question 33. A reaction between carbon and oxygen is shown. How can enthalpy change if this reaction be described correctly? Now here you just need to know the definitions. So of course, enthalpy change of formation. This is true because we are forming one mole of a product so that's a tick enthalpy change of combustion no because with the enthalpy change of combustion you need the element to be uh, com completely burnt with oxygen and here it's an incomplete combustion that is why you have carbon monoxide and not carbon dioxide now with the enthalpy change of atomization it's the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous atoms is formed from its element under standard conditions. Of course, you should be memorizing all of these definitions and you'd find them in your textbooks. And so you can see that we're not forming one mole of a gaseous atom from its element. And so option two and three are gone. So D is what you're going to go with. Now, question 34 is a IGCC question. It's quite simple. Which changes can be used to measure the rates of chemical reactions? Now, the decrease in concentration of a reactant per unit time, that is true. So, you can time how, you can measure the time of the reactant's concentration constantly decreasing as the, con as the reaction proceeds, right? Another one is the rate of appearance of a product. So, as time passes by, more of the product will appear and that is one way to, of course, measure the chemical reaction the rate of the chemical reaction the final one the increase in total volume per unit time at constant pressure that is true if you have a gas as a product so of course the volume will continue to increase and so all three options are correct so a is your answer so now for question 35 all right so for the 35th question 
which statements describe a trend in period 3 between every pair of adjacent elements from sodium to chlorine. Atomic radius decreases. Now, from sodium to magnesium, that is true because, you see, when it's in the same period, the number of protons increase, but the number of shells stay the same. And so, the effect of the protons on the electrons increases, and so, that means the attraction, the force of attraction is greater, and so it pulls in the um, electrons and brings them closer to the nucleus, and so the atomic radius decreases. So, that is true for all of them, but then... For the first ionization energy and the last option that is not true, you can check it um, on the data booklet itself. For the melting point, you should know that from sodium all the way to silicon, the melting point increases. So option three is a big no-no. And um, of course, from your knowledge from IGCSC, then you should know based on the uh, metallic structure, the cations charge of the cations increases as you go across the period right with silicon having a four plus and aluminum with a three plus and of course because of that positive charge the um, delocalized electrons are attracted more to it and so breaking up the bonds will require more energy thus the higher melting point point. and of course for uh, phosphorus and sulfur the melting point will decrease because they are gases and not um, metals or basically they are non-metal so of course then one is your option and so d is the answer now for question 36 x is either nitrogen or sulfur and forms pollutant oxide y in a car engine further oxidation of y to z occurs in the atmosphere in this further oxidation one mole of y reacts with 0.5 moles of gaseous oxygen molecules which statement about x y and z can be correct let's see the oxidation number of x increases by two from y to z so first, let's write them all out. So we have X and Y. So we have X as nitrogen. We're going to do that first. So plus oxygen gives you nitrogen monoxide. Then the nitrogen monoxide plus oxygen gives you, which is the further oxidation, nitrogen dioxide. Then we do it for the sulfur as well. You get sulfur dioxide and then further oxidation, sulfur trioxide. Now we're going to check the oxidation um, number. So for example, for the nitrogen monoxide, Oxygen is always 2 minus because it gains two electrons to form a full octet. And so the nitrogen would have to be 2 plus. And then for the nitrogen dioxide, um, of course, oxygen, there's two of the oxygen. So negative 2 times 2, that's negative 4. So the nitrogen becomes uh, positive 4. And does it increase by 2? Yes, it does. And then we check for the sulfur. It does the exact same thing. So option one is correct. Then they told us Y has an unpaired electron in its molecule. So let's draw out Y, which is nitrogen monoxide and sulfur dioxide. And you can see that yes, in the nitrogen, there is a missing or unpaired electron. And with the sulfur, that is not true, but it's okay because they told us X is either nitrogen or sulfur. So we continue option two is correct. Now the third option, now with the third option, they tell us that Y is a polar molecule. That is correct because oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen and sulfur. And as I told you in a previous video, with the periodic table, when you move to the left and to the right, from the left to the right and from the bottom up, you have an increase in the electronegativity, making fluorine the most electronegative element. So of course, if oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen and sulfur, then that means Oxygen will attract the electrons to itself, forming a partial negative charge and the nitrogen will end up with a partial positive charge and so the molecule becomes polar. And the same thing with the sulfur dioxide because again, oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen and sulfur. But anyways, that would mean A is your answer because all three options are correct. P and Q are a pair of cis-trans isomers. What must be the same for P and Q? See, I just drew a simple example to show cis and trans. Trans having the elements on opposite ends and with the cis, they are adjacent to each other. So now the empirical formula, um, it's the same because there's four carbons, eight hydrogens. You simplify that, it will give you CH2. Their functional group, for example, if they had a uh, carboxylic part or uh, an OH or anything, it's going to be the same for both. So their functional groups are the same. Their skeletal formula, not really. See, when you draw out the skeletal formula, you draw out the carbons. So for example, I'll just draw in the carbons for you and you see that they look different. 
so carbon 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 and of course every carbon is going to have like a small turn or basically one looks like a stair and the other looks like a little bowl so they are different and so options one and two are correct and b would be your answer okay so now for the 38th question the following statements are about the reaction of sodium hydroxide with the three chloroalkanes shown which statements are correct now this one reacts with NaOH by an SN2 mechanism see primary halogenoalkanes or primary carbon react with an SN2 molecule uh, mechanism and the tertiary carbon reacts with an SN1 mechanism now you check out the chlorine and you'll see oh it's connected to only one carbon so that means it's a primary uh, halogenoalkane and so it has to react with an SN2 mechanism so option one is correct now the tertiary chloroalkane reacts more quickly than the others because the carbon atom bonded to the chlorine atom is more positive in this molecule well actually the tertiary chloroalkane will react more slowly because it's more stable than the primary one that's because of the three alkyl groups surrounding it or the three carbons surrounding it it becomes the carbon becomes less positive due to the inductive effect of them so basically what they do is that they donate electrons to the um, atom that they're attached to in this case it's a carbon and of course that will make it more stable and the more stable a compound is or element is the less likely it will react now the chlorine atom and the three chloroalkanes are attached by or attacked sorry by the hydroxide ion that is not true it is actually the carbon that's attacked by it, not the chlorine the chlorine simply leaves now for question 39 for which reactions are the color change described correctly see when you have a uh, acidified potassium dichromate it changes from orange to green when it's oxidized the phalanx reagent turns from blue to red not brick red when it's oxidized and it's used to test for aldehydes now pentanyl plus the hot acidified potassium dichromate orange to green that is correct because pentanyl is an aldehyde and so when it gets oxidized it turns into a carboxylic acid and of course then the reaction can go on so orange to green that is correct now on option two pentane 2 own plus warm phalanx reagent no change that is also correct because pentane 2 own is a ketone and not an aldehyde and as i said phalanx reagent tests for the presence of aldehyde now cyclohexane plus cold acidified potassium manganate nothing's gonna happen because cyclohexane and that's how you know it's an alkane so that means there are no bonds to be broken or anything like that so no reactions so options one and two are correct so b is your answer and now for the final question of this paper which statements about ethanol and ethanoic acid are correct both react with a suitable reagent to form an ester that is correct they've react with concentrated um, sulfuric acid to form an ester which is in this case ethyl ethanoate both react with sodium that is correct so the hydrogen leaves and uh, substitute by the sodium that is true both are soluble in water that is also true because they form hydrogen bonds with the water molecule oxygen like i said before is more electronegative and so the like the electrons will move a little closer to the oxygen than the hydrogen forming that difference in charge and so we got a hydrogen bond and hydrogen of course um, bonds with oxygen and with um, fluorine and nitrogen forming hydrogen bonds and that is it all three options are correct and so a is your answer and you guys guess what we are done with this past paper i will see you guys next time with my next video um if you want just request down below what paper you'd want me to do uh igcc as level whatever it may be then let me know in the comment section below bye